Hi everyone, I'm Sheila Raven, the ORCID US Community Specialist at Lyricis, and I'll be giving a 2020 update on what's going on with ORCID and the ORCID US community. So the ORCID US community is a ORCID membership consortium for nonprofit institutions in the US. Lyricis is the administrative home for this community, founded in partnership with the Big Ten Academic Alliance, the Northeast Research Libraries, and the Greater Western Library Alliance. Our consortium was formed in order to provide a significantly reduced ORCID membership fee for organizations and to form a community of practice around ORCID in the US. The ORCID US community was officially formed in January 2018 and has been growing ever since. As of April 1st, 2020, we now have 132 members, so we're gaining about 20 new members each year, and that is growth that we're expecting to see continue. Most of our members are universities, but we do also have a few research institutes and health systems that are not affiliated with a university. And as of May 1st, we will have some nonprofit health research funders, such as the Children's Tumor Foundation and the American Heart Association, joining us as part of our partnership with the Health Research Alliance. So the composition of our consortium is growing and becoming more diverse, which I think is going to be great for sharing multiple perspectives around ORCID. So getting into some of the trends and activities that we're seeing with ORCID in the US, in addition to our consortium, which is for nonprofit and non-government organizations, the US government is also increasingly using ORCID. On April 1st, the Department of Energy formalized an ORCID consortium for DOE affiliated organizations and other government agencies. So currently the members of that consortium are the Office of Scientific and Technical Information, OSTI, at DOE, as well as Oak Ridge National Lab, Pacific Northwest National Lab, the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility, Advanced Photon Source, and the Center for Nanoscale Materials. In addition to the DOE consortium, other federal agencies are also increasingly paying attention to ORCID. As you might know, the NIH, CDC, and AHRQ now require ORCID IDs for certain types of grants, and the others listed here either ask for or require ORCID IDs somewhere in their research-related workflows. And because we're seeing an increase of interest in ORCID by federal agencies, specifically around funding, but also publishers and funders in general are increasingly requiring ORCID IDs and using ORCID in their workflows. We're also starting to see more of an increased awareness of ORCID within various internal stakeholder units at larger institutions like universities. So in general, libraries have been the primary leaders in the ORCID US space so far, and that's still the case. But for example, with the new NIH requirements, and also there is a new um, National Science Foundation requirement for biosketches, um, which involves a tool called Science CV that's actually integrated with ORCID. Um, research administrators in central research offices and sponsored programs offices are now also uh, reaching out to learn more about ORCID. And, you know, our main contacts for ORCID at member institutions are still primarily uh, libraries, but the more stakeholders at your institution that can be included in discussions and strategy around ORCID, the more uh, ORCID can ultimately benefit your institution, the more um, benefit you'll get from your ORCID membership. So because ORCID is like an ecosystem, the more people and systems using ORCID to its fullest functionality, the more all stakeholders can benefit. So the main point here is you may be um, coming from the library, but you have colleagues in other internal stakeholder units that can also benefit from ORCID and should be involved in these, um, in these discussions. Also, another trend that we're seeing is an increase in planning and action to officially endorse ORCID across campuses and systems. So most recently at Stanford University, their faculty senate officially endorsed ORCID for use on campus. And then um, at California State uh, University, the, the system 
is preparing for a statewide Senate resolution about ORCID, and that's going to be voted on uh, next month in May. So we'll see how that turns out. But that's also um, something that we're starting to see more of across the community. And we're also seeing more expansion of discipline-specific awareness and use of ORCID. So as you might know, when it comes to ORCID adoption, it has primarily been the health and medical sciences and other hard sciences that have been leading the way in ORCID adoption so far, especially since the journals that scientists publish in and the funding agencies are uh, increasingly requiring ORCID IDs. But we're also starting to see ORCID adoption in other areas of study as well. Um, over the past couple of years, ORCID has been working on looking closer at arts and humanities and social sciences to see how ORCID can be adapted and used effectively in those areas. And we're seeing increasing interest in ORCID from law schools also because the U.S. News and World Report is now planning to use data from the Hein Online database to create a new ranking for U.S. law schools based on scholarly impact. And Hein Online has now integrated their author profiles with ORCID so law scholars can connect their ORCID ID and have their data written to their ORCID record for them. So what you're seeing here is a work section of an ORCID record where works have been written directly from the Hein Online database. And if you want to learn more about the law research landscape with regard to ORCID, please do contact me and I can give you more information. Um, we've also seen increased efforts to integrate ORCID with campus systems across our community, especially central identity management and HR systems or other um, central databases where uh, person information is stored. Um, and also other systems that are administered outside of the library or by other units in partnership with the library. Um, so at this point, as of March 2020, um, a little over half of our member institutions have integrated the ORCID API with at least one of their systems, and we have several more in development. So we're seeing a steady increase um, in API integrations. Many vendor systems have ORCID built in already, um, and so that was some low-hanging fruit early on. Um, mostly these vendors are um, current research information systems where um, API credentials can just be plugged in and then the ORCID functionality works. Um, so now our institutions are moving on to more custom integrations. Um, and looking at leveraging a centralized ORCID integration to then have data flow between different campus systems. So we're starting to look at more data infrastructure campus-wide as opposed to just one-off departmental system integrations. And again, something to always remember is that ORCID works like an ecosystem. And the more individuals and organizations and systems that use ORCID, the more everyone can benefit from the interoperability um, and disambiguation of names that ORCID provides. Um, and just to wrap up, in December we did a community survey where people were asked to select what they need the most help with in terms of ORCID adoption at their institutions. And these were the top answers. Um, so getting faculty, students, and researchers in general to become aware of ORCID, register for their ORCID ID, and actually use their ORCID record um, that has been a, a big priority in the community. Um, also, working with internal stakeholders at institutions to plan for uh, ORCID adoption and uh, allocating resources and planning for ORCID API integration with systems. So these are all um, activities, uh, challenges, and opportunities that are at the top of mind in the community. And of course, these are all shared challenges that we can work on together. There's really no one right answer when it comes to ORCID. It's very configurable based on your context and your institution. But there are some best practices that are emerging. Different strategies may work well at one institution, but not others. Um, but the idea of our community is that we can brainstorm together and share experiences um, and you know, answer shared questions and share advice and help each other um, as we move forward with ORCID. So if you want to get involved, please do follow us on Twitter, explore our web pages and resources, and contact our email here, orchidus.lyricist.org, if you're interested in learning more. Thanks so much.